First story. My entitled family, who physically assaulted and disowned me believing my friend's false claims that I cheated on my girlfriend, contacted me with my ex and her baby after three years, begging to reconcile after learning the truth. They said we are family, and I can't be harsh on them. I lost it, gave them an ultimatum, and went and see. Now my ex commits self-harm. I don't know what to do, as I'm so lost in this situation. My coworker told me it would go well here, so I'm sorry if it takes so long. I-20M have been dating Alexis fake name 19F since I was 15. We met in the days when I was a social outcast. I was sitting at lunch, reading the Chronicles of Vladimir Todd, Book 5. She asked to join me. As we grew closer, it became apparent that she was the school's most obvious goth girl. Dark hair, gray eyes, and an anarchy tattoo on the back of her calf. We shared a lot of the same musical tastes, and she introduced me to the knowledge that I am a greaser metalhead. Before I met her, I was an outcast and had two friends. Tiri 21M and Ryder 19M. I met Tiri online, and we instantly hit it off over the love of our Norse paganism. I met Ryder when we went to school together. Little did we realize we were dating the same girl, and she told him that I made her cheat. I had no idea about him, and we almost went into a brawl in the middle of the bus stop. When we both calmed down and talked it out, we started being good friends. Or so I thought. When I met Alexis, I was over the moon. I thought, hey, maybe I'm not meant to be alone after all. She was the light at the end of the tunnel, and she was there for me through the hardest times of my life. We did everything together, and she was always in my arms or had her hands wrapped around mine. I felt like I was on top of the world. We shared music tastes, lots of drawings, and other spooky SHT. She loved my family, and her father accepted me as the son he never had two daughters. He taught me a lot of things, like asyl and woodworking. He built on my hobby of making knives, and was like a second father to me. Little did I know Ryder had a crush on Alex. On the day that was supposed to be our three-year anniversary, I stopped and picked up her favorite flowers red orchids and purple tulips and a black and silver ring with a blood-red ruby, as I planned on proposing after the Halloween movie. I was amazed by her father's right hook, throwing me backwards out the door. He beat my arse all the way across the yard, and wouldn't let me get the word out as to why this was happening. Finally. His body slammed me to the ground, and I shouted, Why are you doing this on the way down? It was then that he stopped, and I saw my ex crying and being held by her mother, and, to my surprise, Ryder. I finally managed to stand and demand what the hell was going on. Ryder told me I had a lot of balls to show up after I cheated on Alexis. I didn't. But somehow he had proof, text messages, screenshots, and other SHT that made me look bad. My sweet and saddened Alexis came across the yard and smacked me. She told me she never wanted to see me again, and that I was a monster who let her on. Then she told me to leave, and that was over between us. I won't lie when I say I have fallen into depression. I kept the ring and kept it put away. Word about my alleged cheating may have made its way around the small town, and the outcast I had been turned into a complete unwelcome. I ended up leaving the town and my family behind. After my own father called me a good-for-nothing man who was lower than the scum of the earth. My mother said the son she had died on the day she lost her daughter. I officially had nobody who believed me when I tried to explain. Nobody but Tiri and his girlfriend. Only he knew the truth, and when Ryder came with evidence in hand, he told him we weren't welcome there anymore. And he held me back when Ryder objected, and I lunged for an attack. Tiri was there for me when I tried to drink myself to death. He was there for me when all I wanted was to give up and die. He refused to let me be alone and held me when I broke down begging him to kill me and put me out of my misery. I was at rock bottom, when I wasn't passed out, sleeping off the drink I was drinking. Finally, I got a job working as a mechanic, and started saving my money. Life didn't improve for me, and Alexis was always on my mind. That was a little over two years ago. After our breakup, Alexis and Ryder got together. There were times I was stomping on my own arse, just because I didn't see how clearly he wanted her. It was extremely hard for me. But eventually I moved on, though I haven't started dating yet. The last time I heard about it, she was pregnant. And he was the father. Any hope I had of us getting back together died when I found out the devil child of my mistake had been created. I started hitting the gym to take my mind off it. And I started losing weight. I kept pushing myself every day over and over and over. Just take it further. And I started getting stronger. And stronger and stronger. Until about a week ago, I got a text. From my mother. She wants to apologize, and yada 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 about all these regrets, and how she's so sorry. When I messaged back, 
She was over the moon and asked if we could meet. Back to my SHTTY little hometown. I go. I meet them at their place, and my father remarks on how I have been hitting the gym and look great. I tell him that when you have nothing left to live for and are at the bottom, sometimes the only way out is up. Both my parents are just talking about how I have been and asking me about myself. I finally got agitated and demanded to know what they wanted after close to three years of no contact, and I reminded them of how they booted me to the curb. They tell me they know the truth, and so does Alexis. Instantaneously, all the feelings came back. I asked them how they knew. Because Ryder stayed on good terms with them, and became smoking buddies with Alexis' dad. While stoned off his arse on her dad's personal brand of weed, which is stronger than whiskey, mind you, he confessed to everything. Then he realized his mistake and tried to backtrack. But by that point, it was too late. He got the same treatment I got, but got sent to the hospital for just thinking he could take her six and half feet father. My parents told me Alexis wants to talk to me and that they want permission to give her my number. I said I would have to think it over first and that I would need time. They said that as long as I was okay, they could wait. I'm so lost and I don't know what to do. On one hand, I want to say yes, but on the other, I am still in so much agony from what happened the first time. Update. So much has happened since my last post. A lot of people told me to go without contact or get closure. All kinds of drama started, and now there are times I wish I had just told my mom to F off. For some reason, my curiosity got the better of me, and I messaged Alexis. It was 9 in the morning when I messaged her, and then turned off my phone. Whatever she wanted to say, it could wait till I got home from work an oil technician for a large car sales company. When I got home that night, I geared myself into turning my phone on and checking my messages. I had five or six different ones from her. But I think because Instagram has the update. You can see when someone is in the chat, now how she knew I was there. Because she messaged me as soon as I was done reading the long paragraphs of apologies and various reasons for calling herself stupid. I asked how she had been, and how she was doing with her family. She said they were doing well but felt guilty. She asked if I could meet them, and to be honest, I considered just saying no and blocking her from getting together. I knew I had every right to do so, as she told me. I said I would think about it. I went to see my mom and dad again a week or so later, after I got off work, and I made the three-hour drive because I wanted to see my little brother. They haven't told my ex I was coming, because that beat-up old Ford I got and fixed for her on her 17th birthday was in the driveway. I guess she must have seen my car pull into the driveway, because the second I stepped out of my bike an old Yamaha RD350 that they gave me for my 21st, she was all but latched on to me. I didn't bother to hug her back, because the memories came back. I asked why she was there, and she told me that my parents invited her over and asked me to talk to her. Then I noticed the little girl in my mother's arms was fast asleep. She looked just like Danny. I looked down at my ex and asked if that was Danny's daughter. She looked down, defeated. Then she told me when Danny told her that she had lost everything she had left to lose, and then he stopped being there for her. Making himself seemed like he wasn't the monster that took my life and almost made me take it on my own. I told her that the chances of us ever being together again were unlikely, and she broke down into tears. My dad told me that I was laying it on her a little harshly, and I finally snapped. I told my family they had a lot of nerve to call me harsh when they believed a guy that dad hated and the mom wasn't too fond of, and then threw me out. I told Alexis that her not believing me and not even letting me speak while her dad stomped my arse while she cried in his Danny's arms are what made me like this. I then told them that the son and boyfriend they knew had died and that I was what was left of a broken man, just wanting my old life back. Without any more words, I lightly but firmly pushed Alexis off of me, put my helmet back on, kicked my bike, and peeled out of the driveway. About two weeks ago, I got a call from my mother. She was crying and said that Alexis tried to kill herself. I went to see her in the mental ward and asked why. Her response to that was to tell me that she had the love of her life back. And now I don't even want her back. Now I'm lost even further. On one hand, I'm still hurt over all this. On the other hand, the old me just wants to hold her and tell her it's alright. As for Danny, we had a run-in when I went to work about a week after my first post. He brought his car in for an oil change and I had to tell my boss to refuse him service. I told him that I would explain later, but to do it, or I would go to jail for slashing his tires. I still need your unbiased opinion, folks. Anything helps. Second story. Entitled boyfriend got OP pregnant and ghosted her, then kicked her out of the house after she caught him cheating, leading his mom to harass her, causing OP to miscarry. 
Now he had the audacity to show up at OP's house demanding his baby, then offered to impregnate her again so they could have another one, and assaulted her for refusing. And that's how now he is in jail. Hello. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I'm currently in therapy, and my therapist suggested maybe telling about my traumas as a way of reflecting back on them and overcoming them. This all starts in high school, my senior year. I was on and off with this guy, we'll call him Henry. Henry was the school player, yet somehow he always claimed me when it came to relationships. Henry and I knew each other since we were young. We grew up together since middle school. It was safe to say that I knew him inside and out, or so I thought. One day in October, Henry asked me if I wanted to come over to his house to help out with his advanced placement history project that he had procrastinated on doing for months. I've always been really smart, and I enjoy history. So I decided, why not? Midway through the project, Henry looked at me and suggested, maybe we could start a relationship. At the time, I had already lost my virginity to someone else and gotten played, so fear definitely took over me when it came to getting into new ones. But this was Henry. I knew him, so I decided that we could experiment and figure out our compatibility when it came to each other. Fast forward a few weeks, and Henry and I are kicking it off, spending time with each other every day and night, being inseparable. We ended up doing the deed in my car after getting frozen yogurt together. After we did the deed, it felt like something became off with Henry, as if a light switch was turned off, and he seemed very nonchalant. Instead of kissing me goodbye, he gave me a side hug and walked home. I didn't question it as much. I just thought maybe he had gotten tired after what we had just finished. A couple days passed, and there was no sign from Henry, no text, no call, nothing. So I confided in my best friends to help me figure out what I had done to make him distant from me. Yet we couldn't come up with a conclusion. And I didn't want to be a bother, so I had just hoped for him to come around. I ended up missing my period a week and a half later. I was terrified and ended up taking two pregnancy tests at Target. Both came back positive. My heart dropped, and my friends were quick to support me. I learned that I had to tell Henry regardless of our lack of contact, so I went to his house and knocked on the door. To my surprise, a girl opened it, and Henry was sitting in the background on the couch. My stomach was at my feet at this point, and I wondered what I did to him so badly to ghost me for someone else. Henry came to the door with a shocked face, pushing the girl away as he walked outside and closed his door, immediately asking me what I was doing there. I spilled the beans quicker than I practiced in my car, giving him the two positive pregnancy tests. I figured he'd be stressed and possibly happy. He always talked about how he wanted a little boy. I, myself, was terrified, but I sought some sort of comfort when it came to his reaction. Unfortunately, it wasn't something I'd expect. He blamed me for getting pregnant and told me that I should have pushed him off before he released me. He also made it known that he didn't want anything to do with my jockars of a child, which, as of now, I don't know what he meant by that. And he never wanted to see me again after he threw the pregnancy tests on the ground and flicked me off. I was baffled, to say the least, by one of my closest friends a person I grew up with. How could he be so cruel? I remember crying so hard that night in my car. I decided that if I wanted this baby, I needed to do research on what I needed to do to provide for it. I was always pro-choice. I always wanted a family at a somewhat young age, so having the chance to get that dream at the moment, I took advantage of it. I told my friends what happened, and they didn't take it well. They would have caught a murder charge, for sure. A few weeks later, I was just starting my second month of pregnancy. I was sitting on my bed, watching Grey's Anatomy, before feeling an excessively painful cramp in my abdomen. It hurt so bad, I could barely take it. I had gotten my friend to take me to urgent care, and something in my gut told me something was wrong. And to my horror, I had lost my baby that night. The doctors were no help. I cried for days. I went into depression. It didn't help that Henry was posting himself in some new relationship, acting as if nothing had happened between us. It took me a long time to get myself back to where I am now. With the help of my friends, family, and peers, I jumped back out of my depression and pursued becoming a nail tech. I am now successful. Now, where has it all stopped? A few months later, towards my graduation, it was April. I was just finishing up my last college scholarship essay before hearing a knock at my door. I wasn't too surprised due to my friends always coming by to surprise me. To my shock, it was Henry. He had apologized for everything rubbing my belly, and even having the audacity to question why I wasn't showing. I was seeing red. I tried to close the door on him, but unfortunately, my strength compared to his was ridiculous. 
I explained that I had lost the baby, and that I never wanted to see him again. He looked at me for a while, as if he were thinking something. This man opened his mouth, and asked me if I would like him to get me pregnant again, so I could be happy. I was dumbfounded. What type of person asks you something like that? I denied it, and asked him to leave. He kept prying at his question, trying to come up with different excuses, such as assuming that I missed him and our intimacy, that he's him, and a bunch of other bullsh tea. I had asked him to leave several more times before I saw him visibly upset with me. He pushed me back, and told me the loss of my child was my fault, that I'd never be able to have children, and how good that was because I'd be a shy mother. I started to cry as I tried to get him out, screaming at him to leave before I threatened to call the police. He ended up leaving my home. I fell back into my depression. It was a little harder to get out of it this time, but I did it. I ended up needing to file a restraining order against Henry and his family, who believed his lies and blamed me for killing my baby with alcohol, which was a lie considering the fact that I haven't drank ever in my life. At the time. Now, years later, I'm married with a husband who loves me and two children. My son is named Trison, and my daughter is Tahani. I love them all with all my heart. As for Henry, I haven't heard much other than that he was expecting quite a number of children. Good luck to whoever has to deal with him. In the comments. Panachi19. It seems like you have your life together and are going in the direction you want. I hope this post helps you bury the past with that narcissistic arse Henry. OP. Thank you for your kind message. It took quite a while to uplift and push myself to get my light together. I struggled with the trauma after Henry's actions, which unfortunately affected some relationships in my life. We are all okay now, and I am doing so much better. Happy Holidays. Some Coyote 1409. I was worried when I read the beginning of this post. To be honest, not having a baby with that pos was a blessing. That's also a blessing for the fetus to not have such an awful person as a father. That's great that your life turned out quite well. You should be proud of yourself for your hard work. Keep it up. Take care, and enjoy your life. OP. Thank you so much for the kindest message. Henry did only use me for multiple things. He took advantage of my heart and well-being. My husband, Keith, is the absolute best. He has been patient with me and my traumas and a wonderful dad to our children. Thank you. Happy Holidays. Update. Hi you all. I just want to thank you for all the love I received from my previous post. I showed my therapist, and she voiced how proud she was that I was able to overcome this trauma, and instead of letting it hurt me, it made me feel strong. But I wish I hadn't made this post. As you know, this is an update, but unfortunately, it's not a good one. After posting my story about Henry, I received a message from an unknown number, letting me know that Henry was aware of the post that I had made. The unknown number then threatened to delete it. Last night, I decided to show my husband. He took pictures of the number, and we decided that we would wake up early to go to the police department this morning to report it. I wish we had gone last night. Around 1.30, I was awakened to a car honking outside my home. Henry had come and vandalized my house and threatened to come outside to talk about my post. He had a bat, and he was waving it around, hitting my mailbox repeatedly, and threatening to do damage to my car. My husband had gone outside to try to defuse the situation, resulting in Henry getting angrier and telling my husband about my situation in high school and how he hoped I died. I couldn't stop crying. Henry went on to yell to the entire neighborhood about how I was a W and said so much worse things about my children me, my husband, and my child that I had lost. The situation hadn't cooled down until around 3. When the police arrived to detain him, Henry tried to protest. But we had a restraining order against him, so he wasn't in much luck. I feel so down. I'm so upset with myself that I made the previous post. I don't know how Henry got my address. My husband wants to look into new homes soon. We are both financially stable with it. But my children are upset due to their wanting to stay in the same schools as their friends. I wish that I hadn't made the previous post. I feel like I have put my family in danger. I will be going to the police station after the holidays to sort everything out, and I hope to be able to update you all soon. Thank you for the love. I read the comments quite often during the day. Happy New Year. I hope this nightmare will end soon. Comments Ford Warrior You shared a story about coming back from a difficult time in your life. It was a story of strength, perseverance, and moving on from a place of darkness. Henry is dumb as a box of hammers. Your post was anonymous. No one knew who you were, and no one knew who Henry was. He outed himself. He is an idiot and an arsehole. 
If you would feel safer, spend some money on a security system to keep you safe. Let the police handle Henry. Fat Hovianchik 9. Abusers want you to stay quiet and not tell others what they did to you. They are aware of the horrible things they did. They don't want others to know what they did. So sometimes they will do things to you to get you not to share what they did to you. You did nothing wrong by sharing what happened to you. If he didn't want it to get out, then he shouldn't have done it. Don't feel bad about sharing your story. It was something that happened to you. Third story. My husband forced me to cut ties with any male friend, saying it was disrespectful to him. Yet he was super close to his female co-worker. When I confronted him, he manipulated me into thinking I was wrong. Until I caught them cheating while on a fake business trip, which ruined our 20-year relationship. My 35F husband 37M and I have been married for three years, but together for 20 years with a few breakups in the middle, were high school sweethearts. We had a few rough patches, but everything seemed okay these last few years. At the beginning of the year, he started a new job where he met this female coworker, and they started to get along. At first, he mentioned her, like her parents were from our home country, and she liked to play role games were both nerdy. That's okay. Even if I'm always a little conscious of my husband's female friends, I was never worried about it and considered myself not the jealous type. But everything changed a month ago. My husband told me he was going to start going to work with her. The week she didn't have her kid, she's divorced, but currently in a relationship. I didn't mind since she lives close by and the company is far away. It made sense. But after that, I started to notice that they would text continuously, day and night, weekends, and every damn day. He had her saved as, lady, her name. I'm saved by my name and surname on his cell phone. He installed TikTok just to send her stuff and didn't even bother adding me. He just had her and a few funny accounts. It came to a breaking point where I ended up crying, telling him he was breaking boundaries and that his relationship with her wasn't normal. He told me that he found a friend who shares his same interests, that it's been a long time since he's been able to talk to someone like that other than me or his best friend, and that he was not physically attracted to her as far as I know, she's not his type. I told him that I needed for him to speak more about things and about her if he wanted my trust, because it couldn't be that I always communicate everything that happens to me and about the people I meet. But he never talks about himself, his work, or his relationships. I mentioned that having me saved by my full name and her by nickname felt insulting, and he made a joke out of it since he didn't believe it was something that mattered, but changed my name to literally, owner of our cat. I'm trying to deal with this as best I can, but her birthday is this week and he bought her a cute bear light that you can hug. Before he was between that, he had a book and a bear plushie. I know this because he used my Amazon account. Two days ago, we had a huge fight because of it. I told him that there are certain boundaries and that a book would have been fine for a friend, but a plushie is in no way something you can gift. He played the victim, saying that I'm making a scene for him to want to gift his friend something nice. He then began talking about how important this friendship is for him, that he feels alone with me sometimes and that he found someone who makes him feel a little better. I don't know if he hurt himself or if I'm being overly paranoid, but isn't that a really f ed up thing to say to your loved one? We left things like that, and I'm really trying to make it work, but I'm sad and tired, and I don't know if I'm paranoid or if I'm being gaslighted to believe that I am. My take is that even if he doesn't plan to cheat on me with her, he's getting an ego boost out of this. I haven't read his messages, but the other day I took a picture with his cell phone and saw in his gallery that she sends him selfies playing cute, but no naked pics or provocative ones. I tried to propose a couple's outing since she's also in a relationship, but my husband always says he'll ask her, but never does or finds an excuse. Another thing I noticed, and now I really don't know if it's just in my head, is that when she arrives to leave her car and leave with him, my husband keeps our interactions to a minimum, we're normally really touchy with each other, like hugs and stuff, and just kisses me goodbye really quick. I don't know, honestly. I've read so many worse stories here that I feel like I'm overreacting. What do you think? Relevant comments. OP. The thing is, this happened 10 years ago, and I was the one in the wrong. I talked with a male friend all day because he was a really nice guy, and I felt comfortable with him. My husband then boyfriend read my messages while I was sleeping and woke me up extremely hurt, saying he couldn't believe how I could talk to another guy like that. They weren't sexual or flirty at all since cheating on him wasn't on my mind at all and I was never unfaithful and never have been in these 20 years. But it's a reality that we were talking way too much. I realized then that there are limits to a friendship, and there are boundaries that shouldn't be crossed. Even if I liked my friend very much, I cut that friendship there and then, because if I have to choose, 
my husband will always come first. And ever since that day, I have had a list of boundaries that I always follow with male friends. Don't talk about really personal stuff. Never complain about your partner. If your partner reads your messages, will they be upset? And this is what also bothers me, because he knows how it feels to be on the other side. Yet he still chooses to keep the friendship exactly as it is. Overrated Anuzio 423 He feels alone with me sometimes. This is the real problem. Why is your relationship so bad and lonely? This is a pure sign that it is not fulfilling and may not last. The girl is just a distraction. But she never would have been let in to that extent if your relationship was good. Are you happy with it? Do you feel loved, fulfilled, excited, and happy? I mean, 20 years, and didn't commit until recently. There were many ups and downs along the way. It may be time to admit this isn't a forever relationship. He's telling you he's unhappy. I wonder if you have been too. OP. It's complicated. We moved countries twice in three years for his job. In the first country we moved to, I really struggled with the language, and the bureaucracy was hell, so I only got my work permit after a year and a half of living there. This means I wasn't able to work, so I was working freelance but earning almost nothing. When I finally got some sort of job and made a small group of friends, we moved again, and again, all the bureaucracy for being able to legally work here. I work from home, but the salary barely covers food expenses since I work for my home country. And I just got the work permit here. So I'm looking for a more stable, well-paid job. Since I don't earn enough money, he feels like he's the one maintaining me. And everything depends on him. He doesn't take into account that, apart from working, he doesn't do anything at all at home. I'm the one in charge of cleaning, cooking, maintenance, buying groceries, paying for services, taking our dogs on walks, etc. And I'm always there for his every need. I left my career and friends behind and thought I did not regret it. It's been hard for me to get back on my feet. I was always self-sufficient with my own money. So it hits hard to not have money of my own since I feel like all the money I earn has to be spent in the house. I was also recently diagnosed with ADHD and began taking medications. That has helped me a lot. But my husband doesn't believe in it and still brings up things that were caused by my untreated ADHD when talking about my lack of help in different situations. Apart from that, I'm happy. And I love him very much. But sometimes it's really hard. Update. Hello again, everyone. I was wondering if updating was needed since it's only been a few days. I want to thank all the people who helped me and made me feel like I wasn't paranoid. After talking these last few days, my husband was behaving way better. He began talking about his work and his friends and stopped texting his co-workers all day. This week was the week he takes her to work, and I was feeling she was being nice with me only when my husband was around. If he wasn't, she ignored me or didn't even look at me. Today was her birthday, but my husband didn't take her because he had to leave early he had to travel to visit a friend. While we were having breakfast, I told him I felt like his co-worker didn't like me at all and explained how she acted differently when he wasn't around. He said that he would not take her to work anymore. TBH, I felt a little bad for her, but I was happy. We had a nice week, and this was a great closure. That was until midday. He came back stressed because he was running late for the train, and in his stress state. He confessed that she was acting like that because he told her about our fight about her and how I reacted to the present he bought her. I was speechless. I felt so betrayed. He excused himself, saying that he was tired after fighting the night before and that he needed someone to talk to. I told him that he made a huge mistake, that he went to the source of our problems to tell her about something extremely personal and that his actions have closed all the possibilities of a friendship for me with her. It's like he doesn't realize the magnitude of what he's done. And I'm so tired of this. It's like he keeps playing the victim and talking time and time again about the present. Like I'm some kind of control freak. But that's not the issue. We already discussed that. I decided to move on from that and accept it. But he decided to double down when choosing a side. I guess we'll talk when he gets back on Saturday. For now, I just wanted to vent. Thanks for listening. Relevant comments. Softly busy. Dealing with relationship stuff can be so tough. Especially when it involves work and friends. It's good that you're talking things out with your husband, though. Communication is key, even when it's hard. Hang in there and take care of yourself. OP. I tried to communicate how I felt from the start, so he knew what he was getting into. Work relationships are complicated because you have to see this person every day. You can convince yourself that you're not going to fall for this other person, but can you say the same about the other person? I remember reading a post on Reddit where a man had a work friend and swore to his wife that they were just that because he actually believed it. That was until they went on a work trip together, 
and she sent him naked pics from her hotel room, and he had to tell human resources, and she ended up being fired. Maybe he was convinced that he had a normal friendly relationship with her. But for her, it was clearly different, and that ended up really badly. Now, if he had listened to me about boundaries, about thinking about how the other person feels or how your partner, or even her partner, would feel about your interactions, this would have never happened. And now he's left with choosing one side and losing the other. Really small update. This is for the people following me. He went on a two-week work trip, and he'll be back Friday next week. I'll update that day. I don't want the post to lose track before I can get some things in order. Thanks for your support. Relevant comment. OP. We go to the gym together. Fun fact. He was mad at my relationship with the instructor. Even if we don't have any relationship at all. He's just touchy. And I see him as a kid since he's way younger than me early 20s. He once drew a smiley face on my arm. And my husband got mad at me. He told me. I saw what he did to you and was like. Of course you know that we go to the same effing class. More than once. He has given me the silent treatment at the gym for something that bothers him. Like when I brought pastries to share with everyone, and it was a kind of pastries that he doesn't like. Final update. It's over. I mean, everyone knew already. It seems like I was the only one blind enough not to notice. He came back from meeting his friend and was all loving. I told him we needed to talk, and he complained, asking if it was necessary because he had to leave for a two-week work trip on Monday. I told him that yes, we needed to discuss what happened and if he understood why it hurt so much when he told her about our fight. He started getting defensive, and I told him if he wasn't capable of understanding, then it was over. He calmed down and told me he understood, and said he'd cut contact with her. He was the one that brought up what happened ten years ago same situation reversed roles. As soon as he showed me that it was bothering him, I immediately cut all contact with the person and told me, you did what had to be done, I'll do the same. So I have to say I was still a little worried but he said that he'd cut contact with her, and I wanted to believe him so badly. So off he went to his work trip, they don't work together. He went with his team. So a few days later, I found out that he was lying to me. I'm not telling how I found out in case he reads this. That's the only thing I want to keep for myself. But I did. He was cheating on me with her. I wasn't going to say anything until he came back. But it's so awful and soul-consuming that I told him today. I told him that if he had the balls, he should come clean and that I already knew everything. And he did. He told me that he was in love with her, that they connected in an otherworldly way, and that he felt like a teenager when he was with her. I screamed, cried, and cursed him. I felt so, so immensely sad. I told him that I couldn't forgive the fact that he made me doubt my mental health. He made me doubt myself. He saw me crying and begging. He saw how much he hurt me, and he decided to keep lying to keep playing his stupid game. I told him it was over. And just like that. A 20-year relationship comes to an end. I'm so sad and devastated. It feels like I'm grieving the image I created of the man I was so in love with. He's still alive, but it feels like that. I don't have a job that pays enough still I'm sending my resume everywhere. And I don't want to leave my pets. So I'll move to the extra bedroom for now until I can get a job that allows me to rent an apartment for me and my cat. I begged him not to even bring that woman near this house in the meantime. I honestly don't know what the future holds for me but I hope it's something good. I think I deserve to be happy, but for now, I'm just going to cry. Thanks for listening, and for all the advice you gave me in my previous posts. Have a nice day, everyone, for me. Relevant comments. Watchim underscore 13. You confronted him while he was away. So he is still on his business trip. OP. Yep. He'll be back on Friday next week. Watchim underscore 13. And what was his reaction? Is he sorry? Or does he just want to pursue his relationship with her? You can even try to expose him to his family, work, and friends. Don't let him get away like that. Besides, he cheated. Take all the evidence and lawyer up. Take whatever you can from him. Do not hesitate. OP. He wants to work things out and go to couples therapy. I don't. I feel the time to work things out was before doing this to me. Blonde 2468. Oh, now he wants to work things out and go to couples therapy. Where was that the whole time he had no trouble gaslighting you and lying to you? What an awe he is. He's just another fool who fell for someone younger. Classic. OP. That's the thing. He's now calling me all day trying to fix things. But he's the same person who shamed me, mistreated me, and disrespected me just last week. I mean, WTF, sorry. But that's not going to work. Something broke inside of me, and I thank him for that. The blindfold is off, 
and now I know even I have my limits. Watchaim underscore 13. For how long has their relationship lasted? Are they still willing to engage? Is he sorry for what he did? I totally understand your feelings, and I do believe it is better to leave. But is he even sorry and willing to take action to salvage his marriage? He does not deserve you. Make sure you leave him. Take as much as you can from him. Use the cheating evidence that you have, and expose him to everyone you know. OP. According to him, he knew she was interested in him, and was always flirting. But he didn't engage until last week, after we fought, because he was gifting her a bear lamp for her birthday. I'm not saying it wasn't like that. Maybe it was. Do I care or change anything at all? No, because he left things escalate until he reached that point. While I was begging him to not do it, and to respect me, I also feel like he's trying to shift the blame, which I find extremely sick, like, you keep distrusting me, and I said if she's going to get mad anyway, she might as well do it. A F ed way of thinking my ex has. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.